Let's say we wanted to combine the values of these two cells. To do this, we would use a function called concat. So let's try it, equals concat, and we see that actually Excel has two functions, concat and concatenate. However, concatenate is simply the older version of concat, and the new function, concat, allows you to specify a range of values that you want to bring together, and is generally just more flexible than concatenate. I would always recommend that you use concat, Okay, since we want to combine these two cells, let's open our parentheses and then just highlight the range of cells. Close our parentheses and hit enter, and we see that it has properly combined these two cells saying rice dry. However, this isn't very easy to look at. Let's add a dash in between the two values so we can better visually separate them. Let's go ahead and rewrite our formula here, typing equals concat, opening our parentheses, choosing our first cell, inserting a comma, and then opening quotations and putting our dash in. We need to use the quotations because we're inserting text in a function, and whenever we insert text as an argument in a function, we always have to use quotations. Hit another comma, and then our final cell reference here. Close the parentheses and hit enter, and we can see that rice and dry are now visually separated by the dash, and it looks a lot better to me. So I'm gonna use the fill handle to click and drag this down. Instead of wanting to combine the two cells, let's say we actually wanted to break up the contents of this cell. This is where we would use the text split function. When we enter it in as equals text split, we see that Excel defines it as splits text into rows or columns using delimiters. Let's try it by opening our parentheses. And since we want to split the contents of this cell into two cells, I click on it and then my column delimiter as the dash. Now this should be good to go. So if I close my parentheses and hit enter, we see that Excel has properly split it out into two columns. If we instead wanted to split it out into rows, if we instead wanted to split it out into rows, we could go back into our formula and add another comma here. So this is denoted now as our row delimiter. If we hit enter, Excel now breaks it up into two rows as opposed to two columns. I just wanted to show you this in case you needed to use it. However, I'm going to stick with splitting it into columns. So I'm going to go back into our formula, delete the extra comma, and hit enter. Let's use the fill handle to click and drag this down. For our work so far, let's go ahead and copy and paste values to avoid any funkiness down the road, using Control c to copy, then Alt-H-V-V to paste. Now, we're just left with our values and not our formulas. One thing I want to point out is that in the text that we just split, if we go into the cells, we can see that the data actually has spaces on either side of it. The left cells have a space on the right side, and the right cells have a space on the left side. This is because in our concatenate function, we only specified the dash as the delimiter, not the dash with the two spaces on the side of it. Well, we might want to remove the extra spaces from either side of our text. So this is where the trim function comes in handy. The trim function is really easy to use. You just type equals trim, and then choose the text that you want to trim, which is in this case, this cell. And I hit enter. And now we can see that there's no longer space on either side. We can use the fill handle to drag this down and then drag this across. And when we go ahead and copy and paste values using control C, then alt H V V, we see that there's no longer spaces on either side of our cells.